book basically talks about the fact that uh, when people don't have enough of something, when they experience scarcity, particularly, of course, of great interest to us is money, but also time. It could be calories if you're dieting. It could be friends if you're lonely. When you, people don't have enough of something, it captures an enormous amount of their attention, of their mental bandwidth. Here, in some sense, one of the real findings is just the impact that these small distractions have on how much mind we have left for other things. You spend uh, most of your time fighting moment-to-moment -moment fires, those things on the periphery just get neglected, including things like, you know, we, we think about it as, you know, you, there's a bucket near you, there's a fire, you grab the bucket and you pour it on the fire. So if you think about, uh, you know, payday loans, loans that are available to you at very high interest, at the moment you're focusing on not having enough, this loan is the perfect solution for your problem. The long-term, you know, long-term, I mean, you know, two-week down the road implications might not be foremost on your mind. The other that's kind of interesting is this notion that scarcity manifests itself in different forms. So the idea that, you know, the busy, in some sense, in many ways, exhibit a psychology quite similar to the poor in money, as well as, you know, the daughters and the lonely and others. Here it's kind of, you know, designing the cockpit of life. How do you design everyday functioning for people who are overwhelmed? And so we need to think a lot more of how we impose on their cognitive bandwidth in ways, in ways that help them succeed, as opposed to create obstacles like charging the money where they don't have enough.